And now let us sum up the most important aspects of our lecture. We said that the four types, root words, derived words, compounds, shortenings, represent the main structural types of modern English words, and conversion, derivation, and composition, the most productive ways of word building. Root word has only a root morpheme in its structure. For example, house, room, book, work, port, street, table, etc. Derived words consist of a root and an affix, or several affixes. For example, teacher, reread, mispronounce, unwell, curable, etc. Conversion consists in making a new word from some existing word by changing the category of a part of speech, the morphemic shape of the original word remaining unchanged. The new word has a meaning which differs from that of the original one, though it can more or less be easily associated with it. It has also a new paradigm peculiar to its new category as a part of speech. Uh, for example, to hand from the noun hand, to can from can, to from the adjective pale, a find from the verb to find, etc. Compound word consists of two or more stems, for example, dining room, bluebell, mother-in-law, good for nothing. Words of this structural type are produced by the word building processes called composition. Uh, the process of affixation consists in coining a new word by adding an affix or several affixes to some root morpheme. The role of the affix in this procedure is very important and therefore it is necessary to consider certain facts about the main types of affixes. From the etymological point of view, affixes are classified into the same two large groups as words, native and borrowed. Affixes can also be classified into productive and non-productive types. By productive affixes, we mean the ones which take part in deriving new words in this particular period of language development. The best way to identify productive affixes is to look for them among neologisms and so-called nonce words, uh, so words coined and used only for this particular occasion. Um, there are numerous derived words whose meanings can be easily deduced from the meanings of their constituent parts. Uh, for example, the noun-forming suffix er could be roughly defined as designating persons from the object of their occupation or labor. Uh, for example, painter, so the one who paints, or from their place of origin or abode, southerner, the one living in the south. Uh, the adjective forming suffix full has a meaning of full of, characterized by, for example, beautiful, careful, etc. Yet such cases represent only the first and simplest stage of semantic readjustment within derived words. The constituent morphemes within uh, derivatives do not always preserve their current meanings and are open to subtle and are complicated semantic shifts. Uh, the Random House Dictionary defines the meaning of the uh, y, uh, e suffix uh, as a characterized by or inclined to the substance or action of the root to which the affix is attached. The examples show that there are cases uh, like fishy uh, that are not covered by the definition. Um, well, for example, rainy. Uh, which means intelligent, intellectual, so characterized by brains, catty, quietly and slyly malicious, spiteful, uh, characterized by features ascribed to a cat. Chatty, uh, which means given to chat, inclined to chat, dressy, showy in dress, uh, so inclined to dress well or to be overdressed. Fishy, um, which means improbable, hard to believe, so, like stories told by fishermen. Uh, the semantic distinctions of words produced from the same root by means of different suffixes are also of considerable interest, both for language studies and 
research work. Uh, and uh, we compared such words as womanly and womanish, flowery and flowered and flowering, starry and starred. Uh, the semantic difference between the members of these groups is very obvious. The meanings of the suffixes are so distinct that they color the whole words. So, womanly is used uh, in a complementary manner about girls and women, whereas womanish is used to indicate as effeminate men and certainly implies criticism. Uh, flowery is applied to speech or style. Flowered means decorated with a pattern of flowers. Um, and flowering is the same as blossoming. Starry means resembling stars, for example, starry eyes, and start covered or decorated with stars.